something was going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day fans and welcome to an exciting Wednesday night for Talk Nerdy To Me. So instead of having it on Fridays, we're now on Wednesdays. It's exciting. There are people joining us already. That's how committed they are. The numbers are screaming up. Absolutely fantastic. But before we get too far, I've got to introduce my co-hosts. We've got MPS and Jeffro. Lads, how are we tonight? We're excellent. So we've called this segment, Let's Have A Little Chat. And uh, so there's nothing formal about it. There's no pictures, nothing like that. And I thought the best thing to do is just come up with a, um, a topic just to have a bit of a gas bag about it. There's no right, there's no wrong. It's all about just opinions, thoughts, and what we like to say. So we're encouraging everybody out there in Facebook, internet land, to uh, give us your thoughts and views on this. So the topic I come up with uh, is that why are there no celebration-style conventions for Star Trek? Now, if you know... Well, you don't know what a celebration convention is. It's the official conventions, and we're talking big events. We're talking, you know, 60,000-plus people run by Lucasfilm um, for Star Wars. And, of course, they've been running uh, about once every couple of years since 1999, and they are gigantic events. Ironically, if it wasn't for the COVID crisis, Celebration 2020 was supposed to have occurred only about three weeks ago, right, celebrating the Empire Strikes Back's 40th anniversary. And it, I just wanted to ask... A question as to why, because Star Trek is almost like a, as big a franchise as Star Wars, certainly been going longer. Why are there no celebration type conventions for Star Trek? And I'm curious to know what people think the reason is. And I know there was the big 50th anniversary thing back in 2016, but that was like a one off event. Why doesn't it happen every couple of years? And uh, I'll start with you, MPS. Um, and, uh, and we're encouraging everybody out there to uh, put their comments forward on this and uh what do you what do you think about it well in actual fact there are star trek events they might not be as big as celebration and yes uh colin and i were both at the 50th uh, anniversary back there in las vegas and unfortunately what happened in vegas doesn't always stay in vegas we came home so there you go <laughs> um i was only there for one day and colin was there for the entire trek if you will uh so he'll have more to say on that than i would but that was a pretty big event but they have those things every couple of years. Uh, the other thing that they have too, if I remember correctly, 1972 was their first con. That so they had a con yeah, way before Celebration, way before Star Wars was even invented. The other thing they're having recently, if you just give me one second, pop this up. I'm actually going to show a picture. So uh, if I can just share the screen for a second. Just talk amongst yourselves. Here we go. Yeah. Watch yourself soon as that could. Star Trek The Cruise happens every so often. They have one last year. Uh, sorry, they had one this year. Uh, and this is next year's cruise. And what they do is they basically have a luxury liner of five or 7,000 people. Uh, and a whole bunch of them are Trekkies. And these are all the people that you see scrolling on the bottom who actually attend as the guests. And you don't just have panels and stuff. They were you can actually interact with them. You know, they have all sorts of activities on the, because you're there for seven days or 10 days or whatever it is. So you actually can hang out with these guys for 10 days pretty much and do all sorts of things. Um, so yeah, that's what they have going along. Uh, the question I've got to ask, so the only, um, it's great that they do this, but clearly there's limited numbers who can go on a boat. Right, and now forget all the jokes about COVID and yada, yada, yada. Let's assume that this is going ahead. Look, March next year, you said like five yeah. to 7,000 people, right? But what happens if yeah. you want 20,000 people to go? So you're missing out on all these people who want to be a part of it. And they've got some people writing in right now, so we'll read about that in a second. Um, so yeah. in the end, it's it's great that they had the gig, but clearly it's uh, very exclusive. Well, look, I, I think for memory, the numbers that you, you have a boat that's got 5,000 people that it can hold but i don't think all those five thousand people are trek fans so and i i would have to go back and check the numbers but i think there's only hundreds maybe a thousand or two thousand i'm not sure of the exact numbers but if anyone else can uh check that out but yeah you're right there's you got a whole heap of guests like there's see that's, that's the gift list and it's massive and they're from yeah, everywhere 
Yeah, I, I get that, but I'm talking about it. I'm looking from the point of view of, um, one, this is like a one-off thing, and why it doesn't happen more regularly of this scale. Now, just quickly, Michelle has said the PTB, I'm not too sure what that is. Uh, they don't like Star Trek. They did, sorry, what? No, it's all right. Um, they didn't get to try to keep control like George Lucas did, so why would they support it if they didn't get to make the dollars out of it? Uh, I guess it's interesting. It's sort of, I mean... Uh, and like the comment underneath that is like saying Star Trek isn't as big as mainstream. Uh, I disagree with that. Star Trek is on an equal par, I believe, with Star Wars. I mean, they're different mediums, right? But and and Star Wars definitely a lot more in your face and a lot more like public. I guess it's like it mm. seems to appear everywhere. But Star Trek certainly has a gigantic following and has had for a very very long time. Um, so uh, and Tracy said five to seven thousand people would take the whole ship. Yeah, it would be the whole ship. So it's just the dedicated mm. crews um powers of be but yeah it doesn't sort of like you would i would have thought personally that once the celebration model has sort of established itself that whoever whether it be paramount or whoever it is that is controlling the star trek franchise would say hey let's just copy that let's do the exact same show call it something else but no. follow the same model because the celebration events are gigantic they're massive and of course in terms of uh guest numbers the amount of actors that have spo um, been spread right across the entire Star Trek franchise over 54 years uh, would be beyond what Star Wars has on offer. So there'd be if you're doing the second cling on to the left, you could pick millions of people. So it um, so there's no shortage of guests there. It doesn't always have to be the mainstream people. So I, hmm. I think that's probably the reason why uh, there's no celebration for for Star Trek is the fact that with um, Star Wars. There's only like a small number of different actors. So what they do is they do one big event, uh, whereas Star Trek, because there's so many actors, they can afford to have smaller events dotted all around the place and, um, and, and do it that way. So they don't need to sink all their finances and all their resources and everything into the one basket. They can afford to do smaller events and, and sort of uh, I think fans probably appreciate that way because that way they don't have to travel halfway across the country to be able to see their favorite actors once whereas some like Shatner will go all around the place and all the other ones as well the other thing too is that uh, Lavina went on a cruise trek back in the 90s so uh, these things have been going for quite some time so you know this is not just a one-off thing this seems to be something that's been on and off for uh, quite some time there's an interesting observation that I've sort of just realized that in the celebrations, the Star Wars celebrations, um, they pick out all these extras and bit part players uh, as celebrities and people get their autographs and whatever. And sometimes these are like people have been on screen for barely seconds, right? Maybe for the Star Trek fan community, they don't really care who was the second Gemma R on the left and all that sort of stuff. It doesn't have the same appeal and it's only the main cast and the main cast is still a big number of people as we saw from MPS's presentation. So maybe the mindset is completely different. I'm not saying it's just guests only, but it's clearly a major draw card uh, for the celebration gig. So I just it's very interesting to sort of see two gigantic franchises who treat the fan side totally differently. And um, so, yeah, if Cruise Trek is the way to go for Star Trek, then I guess that's um, what you've got. So there you go. Well, so it's funny because when, when I was in Vegas with Colin, you know, we were down at the, the ground floor and Rene Aubergeois was in there buying something in one of the, the shops, you know, lollies or drink or whatever the case is and you could actually go up to him so the i think the advantage is the star trek uh actors don't really have for the most part there are a couple that that do need security with them at all times uh don't mind being able to interact with people on like a, a normal level not just in a show level because i went up and said hello to him uh but you couldn't do that with us with a celebration you know you could mark hamill you know the security around him would be phenomenal i would imagine just mm -hmm. to sort of say you're not interacting with all these people because something could go wrong so i don't know if it's the mentality of the, the people as well you know you watch the then when they put a trailer up at celebration and a room of thousands go berserk hmm. you know? so i i don't know in that it's funny sense. isn't it because the two franchises are pretty much run parallel to each other i mean they're both set in space and they're both like had their like they well, I suppose one's essentially a TV series, the other one's essentially a movie series. But I mean, they do run sort of side by side uh, in a lot of ways. And yet, it, it's just like the mindset of the, the way the fans are treated. And I don't mean treated in a disrespectful way. It's just completely different. And I guess it's just it's very interesting because I mean, 
with celebration if you want to go i mean they do cut the numbers i think at like some gigantic number and i just was intrigued by the cruise trek option which if you got to go would be like like heaven on earth but of course you can't have as many people so and you probably pay a fortune to go so financially they're probably getting the return on the investment um but uh yeah you hate to be the person who misses out by one ticket and the boat just sails off in the harbor and you just got to wave and say oh i'd love to have been there so yeah, interesting. So, yeah, it's just one of those bizarre things. And and I agree with what Colin said. Yeah, some actors in the Star Trek area uh, arena have a clearly uh, high regard, like Whoopi Goldberg, for example, are highly revered by the fans, whereas I'm sure some of uh, the other actors who have been around, as Tracy mentioned, in person on a regular basis, they've probably um, everybody seen them and heard them and they probably don't pull the numbers as much as they used to. So, hmm, interesting. So there you go. But what I find interesting is that they're the two biggest franchises that have cons of that size. So, you know, when you have a look at, um, uh, there's a, a He-Man convention called PowerCon, which has been running for about four years or five years in, in LA. Uh, their numbers aren't huge. Uh, there was a Mad Max convention in Broken Hill a couple of years ago, and I think the numbers were only in like the hundreds. It's still running, actually, the one in uh, uh, Silverton and Broken Hill yeah. still still running on an annual basis but they only get like yeah 100 or less i mean it's a dedication to be able to get there that's that's the thing yeah yeah well we I mean, silverton because we had to shoot a, a, a thing down down in broken hill so yeah. you know it's far to get to and there's nothing there yeah i mean i know like phil would know more about this than i would but i'm sure doctor who has its own equivalent of a major convention probably in america in england uh once every couple of years unless you know this for jeffro it probably wouldn't have as big a numbers as either of the other two franchises but it would still do quite well yeah i mean there are conventions um uh, and they do have a major one that uh, is in america and it's amazing how many of the uh the uk guests that they uh, they get over there so it's um it, it couldn't be cheap but uh yeah they used to be a big thing in um the uk and phil would probably know more than i would but uh it seems to be now more America that's taking over major Doctor Who conventions. Hmm. Do you reckon that's because of the new series of shows from what, 2005 to today appeals more to the American audience than the English audience? There was always a, um, an audience for Doctor Who since the, uh, the 80s. And it was, it was bigger over there than probably you even realise. So, um and they made a con real concerted effort in the 80s to always go over there and promote the show john nathan turner uh and uh, peter davidson and colin baker and all that so they they really laid the, the groundwork so i think there's a lot of fans that uh watched it in the 80s in uh, america that that's still there plus with the new fans that are going back and watching the reruns it's it's got a very solid audience that uh they can run big conventions over there and um, get the numbers very cool now someone just mentioned about battlestar i'll get to battlestar in a second but i like this comment from um um for michelle trek was always a group wars got big quickly so it was worship gen uh, generically speaking in regards to fan attitudes that's certainly possible um star trek did take a while to foot to find its and you agree with your mps and in the early 70s star trek was just gigantic but i'm just talking about today i mean with so many movies of star trek both old new tv series all new there's a lot of material there and you would think based on that they would have some gigantic massive massive events but it doesn't seem to be that way whereas star wars which in comparison has a lot less material to work with um seems to be a lot more in your face uh the question about battlestar galactica battlestar galactica would have a very dedicated fan base it just wouldn't be very big even with the new show which is obviously now um since finished like 10 years ago uh so there would be a lot of fans for a lot of shows like we discussed on sci-fi zone with firefly having a very devoted fan base but there wouldn't be any new fans coming in it's just look like, what you got is what you got and as the years roll on and the show gets forgotten um uh no new fans sort of come on board to the same level or the same amount that you once had in battlestar i think would be in the same boat so if somebody said let's put on an official battlestar convention with all the actors from all the shows it would probably be very successful but whether it could be sustained over like every couple of years for the next decade or two i think that'd be unlikely so uh, that's my gut feeling anyway so uh, yeah. but yeah there you go so very interesting stuff it's just it's just surprising so uh, um, and for people out there who weren't aware of this um uh like mps can tell this story as well 
there was a time when uh, we were in Disneyland a couple of years ago. We discussed this on Sci-Fi Zone, I think, and even Star Talking, because uh, at Disneyland there were millions upon millions of people wearing Star Wars T-shirts everywhere, right? All throughout Disneyland, young, old, male, female, it doesn't matter. That everywhere, thousands of varieties. And MPS, what did uh, what was the um, the mission I gave you? Dag sent me a challenge: find a Star Trek T-shirt, one, yep. just one. So we were in Disneyland for four days uh, and basically there was nothing, not a single scary uh, trek to be noted anywhere. Uh, however, as all things like in all movies, you know, that you cut the wire of the bomb at one second and all that sort of stuff. On the way back to the hotel, on the last night we were there, we ran into a dude with a Star Trek T-shirt. Just the one. Just one. <laughs> We even stopped him and we said, dude, it is so awesome. I think it was three and a half days to find a dude in a, t a Star Trek shirt. He said, well done, dude. He was the only person of the tens of thousands of people at Disneyland wearing a Star Trek T-shirt. And I thought, there's something in that that, um, yeah, you got to be mindful of. So it was just one of those bizarre things. So uh, there you go. Um, sorry, yeah. Jeffrey? I've got to give credit to whoever put that comment about uh – Los Angeles has Gallifrey won the convention. That was the one I was actually thinking of. So apparently um, Phil went to that in 2012, which would have been brilliant to have gone to. But uh, yeah, that's that's one of the big conventions for Doctor Who in uh, in America. Gallifrey won. Yeah, I think Phil made mention of the of poor Battlestar Galactica. Uh, don't be don't be sad for it. I mean, if it's got what you need is a devoted fan base, not necessarily a big fan base. Um, whereas like Star Wars Celebration, they're just big events and everybody goes because it's the thing to do. And, um, you know, they can be quite overwhelming. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't stress over it too much. It's about the quality, not the quantity, I guess you could say. So there you go. Very and interesting stuff. You mentioned about the quality. The PowerCon, the He-Man convention that they have for the last few years, uh, not last year, the year before, I believe, uh, they had a bunch of the actors from the movie and the voices of Skeletor and a few other voices. And as far as I can tell, that was the biggest event they had because they had those people there. Otherwise, last year, I don't believe they had many people, if any, who were actors or voice artists or anything like that. So for one year out of, say, five, they had what would have been a peak of celebrity guests like um, uh, Chelsea Field, who played Teela in the movie. She was there. Alan Oppenheimer, who did the voice of Skeletor in the cartoon, he was there. You know, there was a whole range of people. That was the one I wanted to go to. But, uh, yeah, in the last couple of years, there haven't been many celebrities at these cons, but they're just, they're all, they're more about releasing new products and new figures and that sort of thing, which uh, they've been doing for the last few years. Mm. I just know, because I mean, we're going to finish up in a, in, a, in a minute, but I just thought that if I was a diehard Star Trek fan, seeing what all the Star Wars fans are getting, I'd be sitting there going, well, why don't we get something like that? So Cruise Trek's all well and good, but as I said, the numbers are limited. And if you live on the other side of the world, it would be very awkward and difficult to get into. Uh, I suspect once the tickets go on sale, they get snapped up straight away. So anyway, but uh, it is what it is, and uh, the world just keeps turning. And I guess maybe there are a whole lot of Star Trek fans out there actually having a nice little chuckle over the fact that Celebration got cancelled. So uh, there you go. Make of that what you will. Um, all right, that actually brings us to the end of the episode. It's now 9.30, uh, hour and a half. It's all been very, very exciting stuff. We've had a few technical issues along the way, but we're back on board and the world is good. So we're actually going to be seeing you again next Wednesday. How good is this? We're like the Wednesday time frame. And be sure to leave a comment for us as to whether you like the new format of the show or not. Very good. So before I buzz off, we're going to speak to my lads. So MPS, any last words? Uh, no, I think everything's all good. Just be nerdy, guys and girls and nerds of all ages. Very good. And I like that comment from Michelle. It just needs someone to organise it. That is a very good point. Without the organisation, nothing happens. And someone liked right. our program. So there you go. How good is that? There you go. Anyway, mm -hmm. we're going to pause off. See you there. Nerd is the word. I like that. Nerd is the word. Uh, W-E-R-D. Very, very nerd. Nerdy. Nerd is That's the word. Really Look at that. Nerd is the word. I love that. How very, very cool. All right, so uh, very good. All right, so we're going to see you next week. Uh, and remember, stay nerdy, okay? Party hard and rock on. See ya. Wait. <laughs>